My name is Tom Peshak and I am the chief photographer for the Save Our Seas Foundation. I recently uh, photographed a story for Africa Geographic magazine on the shark nets off the South African East Coast. The story of the shark nets begins almost 50 years ago, during the dusk of 1957 and dawn of 1958, when the Indian Ocean of the KwaZulu Natal South Coast was transformed from carefree summer playground into a sea of fear and death. In a matter of just a few days, five people were bitten by sharks. Robert Worley at Carradine, Alan Green at Uvongo, Vernon Berry and Julia Painting at Margate, and Derek Prinslow at Scottburg. Alan, Vernon and Derek tragically died from their injuries. Black December, as this period will be forever known, triggered mass panic and visitors literally fled the coast in droves, leaving behind resorts and hotels near bankruptcy. In its wake, the tourism associations demanded that the killer shark threat be urgently dealt with. As a first response, the Navy dispatched a warship, the SAS Freistadt, which relentlessly depth charged the area. Any shark uh, that survived that initial onslaught had to then contend with a gunnery squad armed with high-powered rifles. A more permanent solution was found in the form of shark nets. These were installed at some of the affected beaches. Most people have this very wrong impression that shark nets are a protective barrier and that they actually prevent the sharks from reaching the swimming beaches. However, nothing could be further than the truth. In fact, 40% of sharks are actually caught on the beach side of the nets on their way back out to sea. Shark nets are actually gill nets, designed to entangle, suffocate, and kill as many sharks as possible. The whole rationale behind the nets is that reducing the number of sharks in the sea will also reduce the likelihood of sharks coming into contact with bathers and potentially biting them. The nets were so effective at catching sharks that, over time, most coastal towns decided to deploy them. By 1989, 45 kilometers of nets were in place at 64 beaches between Port Edward and Richards Bay. The Natal Sharks Board is the organization tasked with managing and servicing the nets on a daily basis. Their data shows that between 1978 and 2008, they caught a total of 33,684 large sharks. Uh, the majority of those were species that have never seriously injured a human being. Despite their name, the shark nets don't only catch sharks. In fact, these gill nets are most likely only second to dynamite, the most unselective fishing method known to man. They ensnare a wide range of animals from game fish to 15 meter long humpback whales. Every year the nets uh, catch on average uh, 58 turtles, 230 rays, 50 dolphins and 5 whales. The late 1990s heralded the beginning uh, of a more conservation-minded attitude at the Natal Sharks Board. And over time, this resulted in a 40% reduction of the total length of nets. 
A temporary removal of nets at some beaches during the annual sardine run was also instituted. And this resulted in dramatic catch reductions of the dolphins and sharks that follow and feed on the sardine shoals. In 2007, the Natal Sharks Board began to substitute uh, some of its nets with drum lines, with the long-term view of possibly replacing all the nets along the Kwazulu Natal coast. Now these drum lines are much more selective than the nets, and they reduce the bycatch of marine mammals and of sea turtles to almost zero. However, some shark diving operations fear that drum lines, which consist of baited hooks, will catch more tiger sharks, a species that earns more than two million US dollars in tourism revenue every single year. Sharks sit on top of the food chain. They are the lions and the tigers of the sea. They create stability in the marine food web. Healthy shark populations are known to control the number of other large predatory fish. Without sharks, the populations of groupers and snappers can increase and in turn reduce the number of smaller herbivorous, algae-eating fishes, which then can result in seaweeds overgrowing, smothering and eventually killing coral reefs. Sharks, though, are not just crucial for healthy coral reefs. In fact, if sharks and other marine predators continue to be depleted at current rates, the only life left in our oceans will be jellyfish, algae, and bacteria. Despite the environmental toll, I believe that the greatest impact of the nets is actually on the human psyche. The presence of shark nets along the east coast of South Africa instills in generation after generation of beachgoers the belief that only an ocean free of sharks is safe to swim in. The real risk of shark bite is utterly minuscule. In 2008, only 58 shark bites occurred on our planet, which is populated by 6.7 billion people. Yet, the unfortunate reality is that in KwaZulu-Natal, a large part of the bathing public is still very fearful of swimming off beaches, not protected by shark nets. I therefore believe that it is premature to lobby for the removal of all nets, especially those you know, from popular bathing beaches such as Durban and Amtsamtoti. However, there are many nets killing sharks at remote and less popular beaches. And I believe that conservation efforts should focus on getting these nets removed as soon as possible. In my mind, it is essential that conservation groups, uh, government, and the private sector unite and combine forces to develop better or novel electronic and chemical methods uh, to replace the archaic shark nets. We live in a time where we have put people into outer space and onto the moon. Surely we have the capability to develop a non-lethal way for sharks and bathers to peacefully coexist off our beaches. I guess the real question is, do we have the will? Fishing fleets kill between 60 and 100 million sharks every single year. And the populations of many species have declined by 90% or more. Sharks the world over are in deep trouble and need help fast. But who is going to have the commitment and the passion 
to conserve an animal that they believe is going to eat them the moment they venture into the sea for a swim. Whether the nets stay or go is not really up to Natal Shark Sport or the government or the conservation NGOs for that matter. The key deciding role player is and will always be the public. It is therefore up to all of us to decide whether we want an ocean lapping our shores that is in decay, that has ecologically collapsed, that is devoid of sharks, or whether we want healthy seas filled with abundant life, seas where sharks still fulfill their important ecological role as the ocean's top predators. <laughs>